Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the webinar on the new version of Applied Safe. My name is Peter Petras, I'm CEO of Petco, and I'm here together with Stefan Küffer, Principal Process Engineer of Petco. A warm hello from myself as well. Today we're going to present to you the new version of Applied Safe 4.5, which we called the Denali version. We will talk about new features, advantages, and its benefits. Denali is the new name of the former Mount McKinley, the highest mountain in the United States. And we tend to have, have every new major version named after a beautiful mountain in the worldwide. So after the Matterhorn from Switzerland, it is the Denali from the United States. What we present to you, prepare to you, is to talk a little bit about what Applied Safe 4.5 is, two slides, and then one slide about implementation. And then we want to use today's time to demo you the new version of Applied Safe, Denali, and the general look and feel of the new configurations and what it means for its implementations. Then we would like to talk about the, implement, the new implementation roadmap the new continuous delivery, some configurations and its new tailorings, what that means, and we will talk in numbers of the benefits. We will round it up with an outlook on upcoming conferences, and then we would like to start with the question and answer sessions. We plan to have at least 10 minutes at the end of this presentation for questions and answers. Please type in your questions in the chat box or in the question box, and we will answer them either during our presentation or at the end of our presentation. So if we talk about what Applied Safe is, then we want to say that it's, a, it's your own customizable implementation of Safe as a process model. You see here the entry scheme of the full Safe configuration of Applied Safe 4.5. And what we have done with the Scaled Agile framework, with the new version, with its new configuration, new Lean Startup and UX, the continuous exploration and so forth, we have transferred it into a comprehensive process model. That means we have roles defined with its activities, activities with its responsibilities, templates, guidelines, metrics, tailoring milestones and phases. What you, and we have built safe on, on apply, Applied Safe, on Safe 4.5, which is now the real standard for scale and agility in the industry. What you can do with Applied Safe is that you can instantiate independently for each level on portfolio, large solution, program, and team. And while doing that, you can run your own concurrent process variations of the very same organizational process. And this is done by customization with the built-in tailoring. And we're gonna show you how that works a little bit with the new configurations. Of course, Applied Safe is extendable, adoptable, and will be integrated with your own process assets in your organization. And as we stated from the beginning on with Applied Safe, we will only stay upward compatible. When we develop Applied Safe, we do that closely together with Scaled Agile, and at the end, each new version will be approved and is approved by Scaled Agile. So we elaborate Applied Safe in sync with the future versions of Safe as well. I am sure that you know that the Scaled Agile framework is publicly viewable on the web, but all the content is copyright protected by American law. And if you buy Applied Safe, what you get in addition to our content and our transformation into a process model, the complete safe content license as well. What we did in addition to safe implementation is that we include some compliance mechanisms and specific capabilities for regulated environments. It was from begin on with Applied Safe our claim that with Applied Safe you can sustain so-called level five and maturity, for example, CMMI maturity level five or, or automotive spice or automotive and or the FDA chapter 11 requirements. If we talk 
about an implementation of Applied Safe, it's for a thing that we have to say is that we didn't buy and build our own process management tool, but we used an on tool called Stages, which is the old underlying platform for Applied Safe. And for us, this is really the world leading tool for process management. So what all our customers do, they already have their own organizational processes, their best practices, their process assets, and in place and what they usually do they take applied safe as a content and enhance it improve it adopt it integrate it extending toward their or towards their own organizational processes most of those companies they have to comply with specific maturity models like CMMI um, or industry standards like ISO 9000 or IEC 62304 or automotive spice and some company have very large own company standards. Most of our customers, they have to support multiple reference models at the same time. And the highest peak, which we have seen so far, is seven reference models concurrently. And organizations are able to do to produce such processes. And one company in the United States told me that they produced, in their own words, monster processes. And if you were at talk to knowledge workers and ask them to work in adherence to monster processes, they will take it as an offense. And what we suggest is that you instantiate and tailor the large organizational process towards the endeavor specific needs of those various endeavors. Here in this example, we see three instantiated programs. Each of them could have its own process variation. Two of them probably for a product developed for the market, so they have to fill all the verification and validation, and one only used internally, so they only need to have um, less risk management, and they probably don't need to release notes or whatsoever. So these people, those teams, those programs, those agile release trains, they would work against their own process variation of the organizational process, and in order to control that, to have that under uh, on the control, we will produce, of course, as well, metrics. So we have process metrics, so that we know how good they do in the, towards their own process. And they have also good ideas, knowledge assets, how to improve the process. And this is something that needs to be brought back into the organizational understanding of the process. And this is how we improved the so-called relentless improvement as it is called in SAFE, into the organization. So this is a loop which we implement completely in Applied SAFE. This is all I wanted to show you from the view, uh, from the demo perspective, from the slides. And now I would like to show you what it really looks like in Applied SAFE 4.5. And for that, let's imagine that you have Tom in the, your company. He's new to the company. He has several years experience in IT and he's in an agile team but has some experience with scaled agility and as he joins a new company and he knows that they're safe in place he's interested to see how solution development and DevOps is handled on a large solution level at his new company. For that I'm changing to the implementation of Applied Safe and we see here the entry screen as it runs off Applied Safe on a cloud server in Germany. I press F11 and you see it's a browser. And um, Tom is working on a full safe configuration. We will talk about the configurations later. And Tom sees here the big picture as he's already used to from the scaled agile framework. And he clicks on the large solution where he's interested in. Tom is specifically interested as a developer in what the solution means, what that term of solution intent means. So he clicks on the solution intent and he sees that there is some information, some description from the scaled agile framework. With that logo, you always see that is safe content directly. And this is sustained as an input or output of several activities. And one of that activities is uh, automated development uh, deployment process. And what he sees here now in this activity is that we always describe what shall be done in that, in that activity. If Tom wants to see more details about that activity, 
activity of that model, it looks quite easy right now, is if he wants to see it as a detailed view of the sidewalk, which is an abbreviation for supplier input process output consuming processes, we see that a lot of processes are giving inputs to the DevOps to build a staging environment and a lot of outputs are used in several consuming processes. They are all navigatable, so if Tom would have the time and the interest, he could click on that directly from here. I personally prefer a detailed view with the swim lens as Tom does, and now we take a further look on what that practice looks like. And what we see here is the complete RASIC. We see here some responsible role to the DevOps, the supporting role, solution architect, solution manager, accountable role, and upgrade. If you talk about how something can be done, this is laid out in so-called practices. Tom has heard about the new practice, the Culver approach to DevOps, and he's interested to see that, and he clicks on that practice, and what he sees from the practice now on the right side is that it has some activities which refine that practice, and he sees also which trainings he should attend or could attend additionally in order to have such a knowledge. This is a very small um, practice, of course, it's just a super practice, and it's laid out in super practice, like the lean flow, where we see how this is laid out to get how this is used in different activities. This brings us back, back to the activity where we have been before and, and of course Tom is specifically interested to see the solution. And for that he will click on the solution. And with all those activities, RASIC and so on, defined in place, we think that you have much, much less discussion time on who is responsible to do something what shall be done, how can this be done, and how those work products which are produced relate to each other. We see here the information of solution rendered from the engine, from the process model. This is not so interesting, but more interestingly is that we have built various views per process area where you see the work products in question, and if you want to see, if Tom wants to see big picture of all the work products in a large solution level, he sees it now in one picture. Tom was interested to see a solution, and if he looks at the solution, he sees that's a super, a super class of current solution and future solution, and if something moves from future solution to current solution, this is done via a solution increment, and the solution increment it may be used as a release, as a solution release, which is mapped in a solution roadmap, and this evolves together with the solution vision, and this sets the purpose to solution intent. So with those relations and these pictures in place, we think that the discussion time of implementing SAFE on a large scale with more than just 30 or 50 people is dramatically reduced with applied SAFE. There's much more which I could show you here in Applied Safe as well, but I would like to hand over to Stefan talking about configurations and different versions. And for that, I'm handing over to Stefan. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> um, now, as I have heard before, there is one comprehensive process model behind of it. So that's the that's what Applied Safe is made of. And Applied Safe additionally is delivering uh, lots of uh, so-called automated tailoring options for the customization. And it helps you that you don't all the time have to define by yourselves how you have to integrate SAFE, because it's lots already defined in the uh, content that we have from SAFE, and therefore we have some predefined um, tailoring options, which is currently already in the numbers of 300 that we are offering. Here I'm gonna just give you a, a very a simple example that you understand how this could look like uh, at the end uh, in these different configurations. So now let's start on a full safe configuration. So we look a little bit into uh, the enterprise level of this full safe configuration. So we can click here on the enterprise level and get an overview of processes that are defined on enterprise level. Applied safe is offering you additional so-called level five processes that are especially relevant for regulated environments. So you see that there is 
the process assessment, process definition, and so on, on the organizational process area. Um, additionally, you have strategic management, governance, establishment, acquisition, decision analysis, and resolution, and so on. So that there is quite a bunch of uh, processes available on an enterprise level. Now, what I'd like to show you is how this looks like on an essential uh, configuration. So we go back again on the overview, and we will just go into the enterprise level on the essential safe configuration. So the process model behind is always the same but it's differently configured. So on the essential setup now, and we go into the process level, we see that there only are the minimum processes defined, which is strategic management and organizational learning. Both are based on safe content as well, that you need um, to define your strategy, as well as the um, community of practices which are belonging to organizational learning. So strategic management, that's the one that I will use afterwards in the next step as well, because in strategic management, we define the company strategy as well as the architecture strategy, business strategy and architecture strategy. But that's the process for this. And I want to show you now on the program level, how we use the strategy to define your solution vision, which is a very important safe artifact that you use. So we go now into the program level of the essential configuration. And as you can see here now on the big picture, the program is delivering the solution in this setup. <clears throat> and for the solution, we need this, uh, a solution vision. Um, there is a vision and roadmap maintenance process. If you click here on vision, and you can see here that as a starting point, you have three different activities, but just one, the bluish one, is the one that is active in this configuration. And normal users won't see the other dotted uh, activities, but we uh, show them to you so that they get an understanding what at the end is really available and what not in the different configurations. So here we see active is the aligned solution vision with enterprise, because in an essential setup, the program does only have input from the enterprise. So it is using the enterprise business strategy as well as the enterprise architecture strategy to align its solution vision deliver the solution. So how does this look like now in a, in a full safe setup? So we go again back on another configuration, the full safe, where we have been before, and look how this does now look like in such a setup. So in a full safe, we have also the large solution level and the portfolio level. And in a full safe setup, that's what you see here, the solution is delivered by the large solution, and not by the program. So the program does not have the program uh, a solution vision because it's belonging to the large solution. How does this look like now in the program? So when you go into the program, we can see now that there is no solution delivered because the large solution is delivering it, and therefore the vision also must look a little bit differently. So when we get into the visioning process, we have again here the three activities, but it's another activity now that is active in this full safe setup. That's the aligned program vision with solution vision. And that's now because the solution vision itself is defined on the large solution level that is delivering the solution, but on the program level, we use a so-called program vision that is defining the, defining the vision that the program is using to delivering the subsystems or systems to the solution train on the large solution level. So this is just a simple example to show you there are many of them, but that you get an understanding. These things you would have to discuss in your company, but with the uh, usage of applied safe, all these kind of questions are already answered. You could also extend them to your own uh, needs if there are anything, uh, any special things that you would like to extend, but it helps you a lot because you don't have to think about how the whole safe setup does really work in a specific configuration on a specific level on a specific activity. So I could speak a lot about those topics, and uh, there are many of them, but in this, uh, because of the time, uh, we would like to show you some other things, and with that, I give back to Peter. So thank you. Yeah, this is quite interesting, all those new solution level and new configuration curations and all that stuff, but there is other interesting stuff in Applied Safe as well, and one of those things is the new implementation roadmap, which we have, of course, implemented as well. So if you look at the, the new Safe implementation roadmap, we see here some elements of that 
roadmap and all those elements are clickable as practices and they indicate how this is really reflected in specific activities on the different roles. For example, we can click on the train executive managers and leaders and we see in which activities this is needed, which training is needed and which additional training you can use. We can go back to the safe implementation roadmap because there's another interesting point which I would like to talk about and this is the LACE, the Lean Agile Center of Excellence which is brand new defined in Apply in, in SAFE or the Thrive. If you click on it we see that it's beautifully defined how you can do that, what it means and it is a general description how you can lay out such teams, how you can handle them and what we see here in Applied Safe that we have specific processes for that. If we go on our additionally produced processes from the beginning on from Applied Safe, we have those organizational process focus, which consists of that you do some assessments on your own process, then you define the processes that you that you do a process improvement management that you deploy processes as well and that you run organizational process training. For example, if you click on process training, we see here some activities again and if you click on train teams and launch agile release trains, we see here that the SAFE, the SPC, which is newly in, in SAFE 4.5 defined as well, is responsible for doing such trainings and he's supported by the process coach the process owners and the quality manager as well. If you click on these, these uh, practices, this will back, bring us back to the implementation roadmap. Another very interesting point in the implementation roadmap is that to identify value streams and the art and um, and this, um, and this practice describes beautifully, it recalls what the value stream is and it shows some examples on the value stream template and how this can be handled in different variations on, for example, for a healthcare provider, how they, uh, what kind of value stream could that look like or financial services as well and how they identify the systems that support such a value stream. It also talks about how to identify such arts and so on. What we've done with that practice, with that description, what you can do here is we laid that out in various activities into the process model and we mapped these steps to existing processes, for example, of release, train building and maintenance on the appropriate labels like on portfolio and large solution in the process value streaming. And, uh, we may can look on which art scenario and what we see here in this value streaming process now is that we have different art scenarios. You can have either a multiple development value stream which is fit within a single art. This would be this way to go through or we have a multiple art value stream or a single value stream art and then you need to decide how the, uh, these are coordinated they either have no coordination, then it's a train as well directly, or it's run as a train with coordination, then you need to have a, a solution portfolio manager, or you run it as a solution train, and then you have your own solution train engineer, which will run such a solution train later on. This is all handled later by the release train building and maintenance, and this is beautifully handled and very clear what that means in a company if they want to apply and implement such a construct in their, in their company. It is a fact that you can have several configurations in place at the very same time in a company. So you can have essential safe, three level, full safe, solution safe configurations all running together and this is really explaining how you can do that and how you come to those value streams. There are much more interesting details on value stream and real stream building, but we want to show you some other aspects as well. So, Stefan, there is uh, some new articles about lean startup and continuous exploration. Yes, thank you, Peter. <coughs> 
So we go up on enterprise level just to have again the overview of the full safe configuration. And from here, I want to explain the continuous delivery pipeline uh, on program level. So we go again on program level. And what we've implemented um, here is the continuous delivery pipeline with practices. Um, continuous delivery pipeline is existing of uh, continuous exploration, the continuous integration, continuous deployment, and release on demand parts. With the demo uh, right now, I want to look a little bit deeper into the continuous exploration part. Um, continuous exploration is a practice, as I um, mentioned before. It's describing how you do collaboratively design your solution based on research like demo logs and so on. You perform the synthesis in your Kanban and then start implementation within the PI side because that's not uh, defined on solution train or release train level. This is supported by the Lean Startup practices as well as by the Lean UX practices. So we go now into this Kanban. So I click here on an activity that is refined by this activity, uh, by this practice. So we go into the review program ethic. And this process here is now the Kanban process on program level. So we are on the left part in the epic part of the Kanban, the right part is the feature part of the Kanban. So the program review epic as a result has the program epic hypothesis statement. It's a hypothesis um, that you would like to support and get feedback from your clients when you deliver that into production. Practices are supporting how to do that. So we've already looked into continuous exploration, but as I said before, there are additional practices like the lean user experience. So when I click here, we get the cycle for the lean UX, uh, which is based on starting with an outcome hypothesis. I collaboratively design it, build a minimal marketable feature, and then evaluate the result as soon as clients are using it and you get any kind of feedback. We uh, define a Linux outcome hypothesis as a result, as I mentioned before. So this is supporting a stop practice on this Linux, this um, activity review program. So I go again back into the Kanban, so that you see you're still on the same um, area. With this support of continuous exploration of the Linux um, practices. So the whole epic is now going through the Kanban as a next step, for example, it gets defined and you create the so-called lean business case. Um, then you prepare the backlogs and as soon as a, uh, a solution train or a release train is ready to take the next epics of features, then they start implementing it or delivering it or eventually releasing it to their clients. And remember, releasing is done on demand and not within the cadence of the PI. So to close now the cycle on this Kanban here, we come back at the end and we have delivered and evaluate the feature outcome. So that's the end of the complete <coughs> um, uh, delivery pipeline. So when we click in this activity, we see now that it is supported by the Lean UX Evaluate practice. That's part that is closing the Lean UX cycle. And the result is that you have the benefit hypothesis evaluated on the feature, as well as there have been ethics defined uh, on the program ethics side with the hypothesis statement. So this is just give you a kind of an example with the process flow, with the Kanban, supported by practices from Lean UX, continuous exploration that at the end make the continuous delivery pipeline. So with that, uh, I give back to Peter. Okay, thank you, Stefan. So um, I think there's one thing which we should talk about, and this is um, the tailoring aspects of Applied Safe, because uh, we have seen that there are several configurations running on, and this is all done by turning, uh, for example, the essential configuration, the roadmap, the continuous deliberation, and now we are talking about tailoring. You have those slides also in your documents of this webinar, so you can look them up later on with some examples. Uh, but I would like to give you a demo right now on Applied Safe. And we stay just in the program of Full Safe where we have been. And we say first that we have everything on the configuration management and control. We see here stop sign and it says that this process is locked and it has a complete version name as well 
course, it wouldn't be named the demo full safe, but it would have your own name, like for example, a cockpit uh, radar or something like that. We have hooked it up that way that always the responsible person per level can change the process versions by itself and change the process, the understanding of the teams. And on the program level, this is done by the release train engineer. Let's now assume that a release train engineer has done one PI so far with his team and they did an inspect and adopt and they decided that they don't want to work with program uh, epics anymore. Now the release train engineer wants to change the process and he can do that by going into an open version so he can change the process version and he selects uh, a working revision, so-called working revision. And we see now that the version name has been gone and the stop sign has been gone and he can do that now by going to pre-built tailoring questions. This is started by a so-called tailoring assistant and tailoring assistant is a mechanism that allow you to go through an hierarchical question tree. On the tab level of those question tree are the so-called one button configurations. So you can say it's a full safe, it's portfolio safe and then you have to out of the box configuration of the safe of need specific levels or you can say I want to be more specific and then you go into those defined tailoring options and now of course you have to say that it's still a full safe configuration and now we have some questions which are all over to be found in the scaled agile framework. If it's coming from the safe you see the safe logo here as well and it's our concept that you understand directly from this question what you want to do. Depending on the answer you will have more following questions and for the time being we just say no on every question. So we have no system art and we don't want to work with the program epics as we just said before and we don't bother about the applied safe questions for itself and now with just these two questions answered there are 17 different elements of activities, metrics, roles, work products which have been changed in the process and if I'm fine with that I just say save and then it's reflected in the process. I can do that many times as long as I want to until I think this is a good enough, it reflects what we want to do and then I would release it as a valid version to the team again which is the only version that they would see. If they would click then on Epic on Program Kanban then they would see that the program epics have been gone away and so the process has been changed very easily. So this program is happy to take it out. So now from the time being it's really over with the demo and we would like to round up and to finish with a question and answer session and remember that you can send us questions via the chat box. There's a question from Raj, we will answer that soon. And can you please explain the question a little bit Raj? It just says at the enterprise level to us. And, um, and to round it up I will go back to the presentation and for that we would like to talk about applied safe in the numbers. With those work products defined, with those activities, processes and RASIC defined, we think, we, we state, we see that 67% of the discussion time is reduced on how to interpret safe. You still will have some discussions but it's not on what is an epic and what is a Kanban but it's more on how do we do really do that. You can reduce the cost of delay by two years by using that process model in place rather than developing by yourself. This is just the duration time and of course you're going to save 16 person years of definition work with an applied safe based rollout. We showed you about four tailoring questions but in total we have more than 300 building configuration and tailoring options built into Applied Safe and they all reflect sentences which are written in the Scaled Agile framework as well. We say that 80 to 100 percent of the content can be reused rather than reinventing the wheel just describing what a Kanban is or what, what a 
what a scaled agile framework really means. You get 3,500 defined process models, and of course, it sustains the so-called level fives, like in CMMI, with our 20 add-on processes for compliance within regulated environments. It's 100% solid, comprehensive implementation and interpretation of SAFE as each version is approved by its inventors by Scaled Agile. For the time being, we have 27 defined reference models of CMMI, A Spice, I see a many model horse, and many much other R and reference models defined in place. And we've, it only needs three days training for a process engineer in order to be able to expand, to adopt, apply safe to their company needs. Some outlook upcoming conferences. Applied Safe 4.15 will be available from August 31st, 2017. You can request your personal demo playground to further evaluate capabilities for Applied Safe. Just get in contact with us, the information is here. And we are also at the Safe Summit in the first week of October in San Antonio in Texas and in the Agile in Automotive 2017 in Stuttgart in Germany, where Porsche and Mercedes come from. And we will have also a tutorial about scaled agility in the regulated environment. Visit our booth, come to us, and we can demo to you apply to for that one in further details. So with that, I would like to open the questions and answer session. And I see that we have um, more text from Raj. Uh, in the solution view that you showed a view of a model, does that depict how the integrations will be displayed across the solutions through multiple processes? Um, yes, we see, um, I, I hope I understood the question correctly and then um, Yes, if we integrate it with other processes, you will see directly that it goes to, for example, if you're hearing other features, then it would go into other activities. And this is even possible that you could have a hybrid agile approach where you have like an iterative, an iterative and life cycles or waterfall life cycles. This could be integrated as well and you can use the same work products or very similar work products as well. This is integrated and we have done that several times as well. I hope this is answering the question. If not, please type in another words. There's another question from Raj. No, that, that was the question. Okay. I have just seen that there is another question from Tim. So he writes, what happens if SAFE comes up with a new release and I did all those tailorings or even some changes and expansions? How can I bring in new content from SAFE? Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, uh, of course, this is this is normal usage. Uh, we have a, we have an integrated concept uh, which is so-called uh, core processes. And if you look at the activities, all the elements defined in Applied SAFE, you see here a green bullet, and this, it says it's a protected element of a protected element of a core process of applied safe program and um, if you do extensions on the activities then well your own company specific extensions on those activities then this will never be touched by upgrades or updates from the safe so the, there you find another thing that could happen is that you want to overwrite such an activity this is possible and if you have done so and it changed on others on our side as well so you have both sides changed then it will inform inform you visually that both things have changed and you can decide if you want to go back on the trunk or stay on your own branch on your company this means you can change all the contents like role names work product names activity names and so forth and still have it under control 
I hope this answers the question. Otherwise, just type in in the chat box. Um, I just think there is another question, and I think this last question we can answer. Uh, there is a question from Nicole who is asking, who is going to help us to implement SAFE without Cloud SAFE? Uh, um, yeah, as I said, with this three days training, um, it's it's our concept that our customers can do the extension and adoption of Applied Safe by themselves. So we provide several trainings. Uh, I can show that here for different roles of Applied Safe. So we have trainings for quality managers, engineers, metrics engineers, deployment, and so on, and. Um, and of, with those trainings, you can learn how to adopt Applied Safe. But of course, you will still need a lot of consulting help for the cultural transformation towards Safe. So Safe is something that you need. And for that, we have a, a worldwide partner network. And uh, these uh, these companies in those partner networks, there are, there are companies believing in scaled agility and the power of Applied Safe as an implementation of the Scaled Agile Framework. For example, in the United States, there's Blue Agility, Rome Agile, Agile Transformation, Agility Health. In Germany, there's Kegon, in UK, Turkey, and many more countries. There's a list on our website. There are 18 partners right now, which are listed on that site. So we have a lot of consulting partners, which helps you to do, to do that transformation towards Safe and with Applied Safe. We will give you those trainings which you see on this side here. I think this is all for the time being. We have finished up our 45 minutes. Um, write us an email if you have further questions and we would like to take the time to discuss it in detail with you, together with you, and then we can have a direct one-to-one -one conversation as well. And I'm really looking forward to hear more from you. So with that, I would like to conclude, uh, conclude and wish you a nice day and have a pleasant evening or afternoon, depending on where you are from. So we say hello from Switzerland and goodbye. Bye. Thank you for attending. Goodbye.